Apologies for the late start. Can I just say hello and welcome to our environment on the Human Security Committee. Uh, you'll notice that we are webcasting. If you're speaking this evening from around the table, or using the microphone system, when you finish speaking, would you be kind enough to turn it off? Apparently, the webcasting set up when the microphone, when more than one microphone is left on, and makes the audio on the webcast quite a poor quality. So, if it doesn't turn it off, when you finish using your microphone, turn it off. <coughs> and as I said, hello and welcome, thanks very much. Do we have any apologies for absence? Following that, the plan will be modified 
and then we'll come to full council in July 2019 and then if approved at that point it will go on to the Secretary of State around September 2019 for the examination of public which will take approximately 12 months and then um, following that the plan will be adopted and that will be our statutory land use plan from approximately 2020 through to 2035. Thank you Chair. Thank you David. Okay. 
Um, just to give Candice some kind of headline areas really on in terms of capital. We had a budget of about £1.7 million for the Saving Facilities Grant, and we were quite close to spending all that in the year. We had various housing improvement schemes, uh, and again, we might be getting to spend £7,000 more than the budget. Okay, that one. I see the scheme on leisure, budget in 926000 We're actually going to spend £85,000 and some delays there on, on the projects. Uh, new house building scheme is £50,000. It's around where the basic provider provides about £4,000. And we had some, 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 some costs in terms of parts, steps and vehicles. There's another scheme, the Medicare Hot Solar, the Sunrise Scheme of 1718. So that's the 1718 that comes through here. Okay. Just going on to now to the current year, 1819. And that's just an overall pie chart for the council budgets. You'll see it's on the top left hand corner there, really. The area of the council, where we budget is £3 million a year. Okay. Um, again, people's area, which you believe it, is, is by far the biggest area we spend, 171 million pounds, that's a bunch for that. This is about 63 million, and our area here is 65.9 million, it's sort of the budget, and that's the kind of the red block on that, on that chart there. It's just a pie chart, so express the size of the budget. Okay. Okay. What's in our budget, I suppose, is to say in terms of in terms of what's actually in the service that we, we, we look after, it's, we can break down into kind of three blocks there. So we've got an environment block, waste collection, which is probably around, around about £10 million a year in terms of waste collection. The waste levy is probably about £16 million. We've got things like environmental health, licensing, training standards, etc. There's a housing block, housing planning, again, sports housing, it's quite a large amount of money, about £9 million or so. Um, then we've got the homelessness, housing standards. Family area itself, and then for that final one, there's an leisure recreation. That includes things like sports and rec, libraries, parks, and cultural services. And we probably spend not far off, back in there, about 18 million pounds in terms of leisure recreation. We take parks, libraries, uh, you know, all the sports centre into account. It's from quite large areas. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the area we kind of cover. Okay, and just break those, those three areas down, then, into the, the, the quick summary. In terms of the first quarter, we're kind of forecasting, and they've spent the moment about £75,000. I'm obviously going to try and do our best to get that back into line. There's about £325,000 in terms of environment. The housing planning area at the moment is £450,000, and there's about £330,000 again on leisure and recreation services. Okay. So, a bit more about those. So, that's the overspend. Again, in terms of environment, the contract saving is from last year, kind of up, ongoing, it hasn't been achieved. Kind of roles this year. Okay. Um, in terms of leisure recreation, there's a couple of schemes. We've got, we've got delays in here at the moment. There's a woodchurch, we're well, looking at the same conditions and sort of change of woodchurch. That's been delayed. And then we have a scheme for resurface and football pictures. Um, and I think there's been some drainage issues there. And that's just delayed the implementation of the scheme. The scheme's coming ahead. So it's just a delay in actual coming into place. So the same will be achieved, but not on time. Okay. That's kind of just a quick review of revenue. And then just in terms of the capital program for, for the year, uh, for the 18 19 financial year, capital program for the year for this, for this area is 13, about 13 and a half million pounds. Um, you can see there's so, yeah, we've got 50,000 pounds of environment for what we've talked about, great, it's not a lot of money. Uh, big areas, perhaps housing planning, 77 million. And that includes some decades of annotations, table facilities grants, and housing investment fund. And we've got five hundred sixty million pounds of leisure recreation, and there's another scheme there, including areas like the, the World Town Centre, uh, the Women's Art Gallery, the Australian Stadium Centre, various other initiatives as well. Uh, spent for the first quarter, it's quite low, it's about half a million pounds, of course, about 13 and a half million pounds, and these are the obvious push on to get the schemes you know, progressing further, etc. We are getting low on the, on the spend side there. Okay. So that's, that's just an overview of the revenue capital for 2019. And then just going forward then, I suppose, is in terms of the 1920 budget, there's some, there's some key dates and there's a role for the committee or the committee. Um, in terms of the committee, the budget gap for 1920 starts at £45 million. Pounds. So we need to find £45 million pounds of efficiencies, extra income, savings. And obviously, over the two committees, we focus on looking, reviewing, challenging any kind of 
which are poses that have come out from cabinet, and cap cabinet, which is kind of a few years from here. Committee may also be recommended, which poses these ideas that we looked at. Okay, um, again, income generation services for succeeds, and, the, and they also make comments on the kind of chat proposals that come out. Um, on the right hand side, there, obviously, the kind of key gates of the current budget, basically. The idea is that like 26 November cabinet will have a set of budget proposals that will be agreed. Then they go out to consultation. Obviously, December, the OU Street Committees will also look at those proposals, review them, challenge them, etc. Um, and feedback. Uh, 18th of February then is, is budget cabinet, okay, through the budgets and the updated needs and financial strategy. On the 4th of March 2019, full council will then meet to consider the budget, obviously any alternative budgets, and, 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 and set the council tax. So that's kind of for coming in for the budget. Okay. That can be a presentation. Thank you, Craig. Members, any questions? Thank you.
Yes, by all means. Um, which, which is that's a good idea that we have the cabinet report. Um, I don't quite know what we're supposed to do because we've got we can't scrutinise something we've not had. So when do we scrutinise what you've given us if we continue in this format? Yeah, I'm quite happy to, you know, just being present on the set issue to you, what's that has to be recommended, we will do that in the future. Okay, um, the report really is based on the first quarter, and what things add on, next bits of the first quarter information, so I've been the report based on the outturn as well for, 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 for 17 which is comfortable to be cabinet already. Okay, so, um, now to everyone, the cabinet report for outturn people as well, we have two reports to um, I'll just like adding a bit of time to it. Any other questions, Alan? And I think, thank you, Chair. Uh, the, the, again, thank you for your, your report, Peter. Um, again, the, the, there are two areas of concern where we've got these considerable shortfalls uh, in the first quarter. <clears throat> um, and I, I'm just a bit anxious that the, the report sounds a little, little bland. Uh, the the cost, establishment costs, the savings have not materialised. Well, I'd like to know a little bit about what is being done to make these costs materialise. And on, on the leisure um, report, uh, it says continuing delays in implementation mean we're not going to uh, achieve all the, all, the, all the savings. What steps are, are being taken to, to uh, resolve that situation and to remove those delays? It's all very well known that we're, we're falling short of the amount of money we're, we're trying to save, but what's being done about it? Yeah, okay. Okay, well, in terms of leisure recreation, um, one of the delays is release of picture speed. So there's been issues there with drainage. Now, they have now been alleviated. Crew has been received, etc. And that scheme is going ahead. And I'm thought what's happened with those is the scheme, rather than coming in the year, will be later on in the year. So the problem there will be just the delay the income. So it will be achieved, but not in time, that will be a cost in the year. So the, the, the sports exhibition team will need to look to try and find any kind of competition savings that you can find. So I think that area. Okay. Wood chairs, I think I think there's kind of consultation going on at the moment with staff at Woodchairs around there. The, the opening hours, they're sort of there. How have they funded themselves? How have how, how, how would you just keep sort of being worked, etc. And that would give us kind of mitigation. I think it's a lot from that. Okay. I think it's sort of the in terms of the kind of the contract negotiations in terms of the same fit for that's probably sort of probably reached that probably an end point. It's probably a case we just need to sort of um, Try and find some kind of mitigation to try and bring the cost down. So. I just follow up to on the Wood Church one. I mean, how, how close are we to be reaching agreement uh, with the, with, with the <coughs> unions on, on the implementation of the new working scheme? Right. At that time, I'm sure, sorry, no, that's not your comment, that question. I think, uh, Adam, you want to address. Normally we have the consultation process a bit earlier in the year, it seems like you know, we're only going to have the budget proposal at the end of November and then we're going to look at them in December and we'll see this Christmas period in December as well. And we have got another scrutiny committee meeting in January, at the end of January. And will we have the consultation results by then? This committee can then scrutinise what's come back in the consultation as well. The chair, yes, I'll probably just vote yes, I think that's what I'm It needs to actually be as cabinet, the, uh, the, the feedback from the review should be used to be some back by cabinet via the short February paper. So we need to be in January. So we, we will see that the consultation results. Okay. Um, and just on a, on a separate subject, it seems to be on the capital spend, it seems to be significantly not achieving any of the capital spend, you know, it's spent a, a very small sum virtually across the board. Um, so I'm just wondering why why isn't it easy for that? You know, it seems to be a general picture. I know you think about a couple of issues, but it seems to be a general picture that we're not investing, we're not, we're not, we're not when we have money, we don't spend it. Yeah, yes, I mean I think some is down, perhaps down is down to love with all stuff to get the seed over the line to stop them off, but we need we need to be true definitely getting schemes for the money. I think also some of maybe about the forecasting of the spend as well. So you know, people put a bit forward to see but actually being realistic in terms of when the scheme will start, you know, in terms of rather than the season's on first day, but 
it really start, you know, the September, because the leading time to get kids in attendance, etc. Get in any kind of sort of a work in you know, as well. So we do need to improve as council on that area definitely. Thank you. Certainly you want to ask questions. Thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, I'll just apologise to the uh, members who had to listen to my diatribe on this on uh, Tuesday evening. Uh, I would just like to disagree with the uh, council of Vox on something that never was up there before. Um, this is a scrutiny committee, and that's exactly what it is. It's a scrutiny committee. It's not any budget proposal. Uh, it's not any help filled that was joking. Um, I'm, I'm obviously, like, so that may sound negative. Um, for, there's at least five members sat opposite that, um, and for, for the benefit of those that are not here, um, about five or six years ago, we actually, what you're actually asking for, basically, is a committee system. Um, we offered you a committee system that was voted down by yourself and fell as the leader at the time, because uh, you wish to see it strongly. The whole point that works is you come with proposals, you make proposals, and we scrutinise them. That's, 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 that's the system. It's not for us to do your job for you. If you want to we offered you it. It's the committee system. You've got the um, input of everyone from all of the political spectrum. That's not how it works. Um, so the question specific uh, to the officer on 1718, it was a get, get around capital uh, expenditure. Um, it was just on leisure recreation services. It was quite significant to understand what, what, what was that or why was that. Yeah, yeah, I think we're, I think the numbers numbers seem that way quite uh, through some times and the kind of growth from 2019. I'll get back to on the actual actual specifics. Yeah, on actual specifics, I don't think that you know, I think that. Peter, I just wanted to mention, uh, I think Steve mentioned earlier about you know, out and about in the community. Certainly over the summer holidays and um, summer period from about June and July, when the weather was incredibly good in that, um, some of the plays uh, golf at uh, Rapidwood and Arrow Park. During the whole period at Arrow Park that I went there during June and July, and I think it continued to August, um, the um, new uh, car parking machines were out of order. Every time I went there, I counted about 120 cars. And I think it must have gone on for at least, and I, I should have gone up today to see, I haven't because been on holiday, I haven't been up for the last two weeks. But one of the areas here said, said, says, underachievement of car parking income is going to create problems that will have to be carried over into 18 and 19. Why can't we repair a machine within a, I mean, considering all that happened about car parking charges, it just seems incredible to me that this has been allowed to happen and the amount of income we've lost. Could you explain this? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm an accountant rather than I'm not saying that it should, should, should be lost there, but it's one I need to ask back to the search department to just raise it then. I, I take it for Councillor, you've raised that for my view. I mean, I don't, usually when I do raise these, I don't get a response. I'll be very honest about it. I do not get a response, but I told me I promised responses, but I don't actually get them. Um, so, you know, is there anyone here who could answer that question? Because that's a lot of money that's been lost over six to, if not eight weeks or more, or is it still continuing? Great time to ask Mark that question. Yeah, that, 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 will, that will certainly be my area, Chair. Uh, I'd need to look into that, Jim, I'd need to look into that and get an answer back for you on the detail of that. So, um, I've not had anything reported to me around an issue like that that's had a significant effect on income. So it's not been raised really so far, but I will look into that issue uh, and come back to you. So I'll make sure that we uh, circulate an answer to members offline on, on that particular issue. We'll make sure also that uh, I think we touched on the uh, on the scheme at uh, Wood Church as well. There was a HR process that we were working through over a period of time. Again, just where that sort of thing in terms of the detailed discussions with the trade unions, uh, I'll make sure that. Uh, we get an answer on that as well. Just for completeness on the uh, on the statement around the BIFA contract, so members will remember we talked about it here.
that we did put a save in the, uh, I think it was in the 17, 18 budget uh, around uh, making back office and other efficiencies on that large BIFA contract we have. So as Pete said before, we're spending the you know, best part of getting on for 10 million pounds on street plans and the nephew's collection recycling every year. The premise there is that surely there should be ways of driving efficiencies, cost efficiencies out of contract with BIFA without affecting frontline service delivery. Um, Mickey Butterworth is heading up a new commercial management function within the council. So, so far, you may remember that we've already, Nikki and the team have already made some progress against the 400,000. I think we've probably identified efficiency of about 130. Uh, but just to reassure members that that contract with BIFA, with all of the contracts uh, that the council has across the board, Nikki and this dedicated new team are going to be looking at all of those contracts to make sure they're working as efficiently as possible and drive out further savings. So, yeah, just, just can I uh, 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 mention about Woodchurch? I mean, I've just looked at, looked at all the capital sort of um, programs, and all the leisure centres are included except Woodchurch. Woodchurch is one of the most uh, needy ones. So I'm, I'm just wondering how this was all drawn up. You know, you've got um, you've got Riso, you've got uh, West Kirby, you've got um, you know everyone, Burt, um, uh, uh, the tennis centre, Lord Pavilion, I mean, and you know. Who's actually drawn this up? I brought it to the attention of officers for the last year about the needs of Woodchurch Leisure Centre. I would have thought, you know, if we've got capital spending, at least someone should be looking at it. Now, I've been waiting for the leisure review for about the last three years, but obviously the capital program is still going on. So my question is, why is Woodchurch not included in any of this? Christina, you wanted to. Is it Elton? Transport service. No, sorry, Chair, that'll have to be a bit of a plan. Sorry, Chair, I've just said then the uh, will be about offline, so it's all members. Okay, Christina. Mark, I'm afraid again, because I, I knew the questions I wanted to ask weren't in the to make. But as you've raised it, Mark, I must ask if that car parking charge was out for all that time, and Tony's each time seen 120 cars at the time of day that he was there, which means potentially a lot more, why would it not be reported to somebody? There must be a mechanism, something must have gone very, very wrong. And I think we need to know exactly what has gone wrong. Because if this was mirrored across Wirral, we would be losing thousands, and we probably are. And the second thing is, I agree entirely with Tony about we ask things and things don't happen. I mean, everybody will be sick about me asking, but I'll ask again about Rackham and Golf Course. We have pointed out to you for a hundred years that nobody takes the money. You then came back to us to say, nobody takes the money. We then told you how many people were going on without paying. You then came back and told us how many people were going on without paying. And people still aren't paying. So if there was a genuine desire to A, make money for this authority because we haven't got any, and B, make sure our golf courses work, somebody would have done something. And if they have done something, they might just have reported it back to the ward councillors. Yeah, so to respond to both of those, so um, we, we do have a, a mechanism for repairing the meters. So we, we have a, an office of resorts that goes around and actually checking those meters and monitors the cash collection and things like that. So there is an arrangement in place. Uh, but clearly the suggestion is, is that the machine has been out of working order for a significant period of time. And you know, I need to go away and find out some more information like that because we have a mechanism. The inference is that that mechanism, that reporting mechanism, isn't working. So I need to find further information on that. Um, what I do do my best to do here at this committee, and an example is you know the, the income, you know, at Golf Course is is 
I'll always try and go away and get a detailed response from members and make sure that it's circulated. And unless my memory is very, very mistaken, I've gone away previously, I've spoken to Damien Walsh, the manager, a briefing note has been produced and that's been circulated to members of the committee. Now, I will very happily go away and just check that position with Damien. We'll update the briefing note as necessary in that explanation and I'll make sure that we send that, that, uh, that note round again and uh, a latest position on that. So I will absolutely take that again and do that. Can I just say to you, Mark, I did say, we told you the number of people who were bumping on, and you came back on an email and told us the number of people who were bumping on. We told you people weren't paying, and you came back and told us. If that was Damien, that's fine. We've all been told that, but we've already told you. What I'm waiting to hear is, we have this person in place, this is how much money we now collect. These are the days when the bottom golf course couldn't be used. These are the days where there's very little um, movement on the golf course, because as soon as you tell us that, I will be on that golf course to check that that's right. Noted, and I'll make, I'll make sure we put that up in the, uh, in the update that we'll do now. Thank you. Steve. Well, I just, just want to disagree with Tony's view of what scrutiny was. We, we've had scrutiny reviews, scrutiny is doing well as well, it's either popular or unpopular. And what we, we've tried to do is be proactive about what we do with scrutiny, and it's not just about receiving uh, what is handed down from the cabinet. If that's, if that's what you're satisfied with scrutiny, then your expectations are low. Um, I would like to do it, but I think it's just like that. I didn't interrupt you, Tony. Um, uh, you know, I think, and the leader said, no one has a monopoly on good ideas. And, and if we have a, an idea or work something through one of our task groups that either reduces the same or an improvement in service which makes it more efficient, hence the same or better. Warehouse in our communities, we listen to our communities, we had two contributions tonight where they think council performance can improve. <coughs> you want, you know, you're happy to sit there and let it all happen to you, then, then if low expectations are. I would encourage members that they have an idea or they observe where the inefficiency we are, where savings could be made and service improvements made, then this is exactly what the committee to, to do it and get involved in task groups, task and finish groups have come up with some good ideas in the past. We'll do in the future. So that, that's my view of what scrutiny can do uh, and should do. Okay, are there any more questions for Peter? Peter, can I thank you for your time and your presentation? Thank you, Peter. Thank you. That takes us on to agenda item six. Oh, sorry, I do apologise. I do apologise. There's a recommendation to note the report then. Yeah, yeah. So which report are we noting? The report that we've just received. The caveats that we've already discussed. Sorry, Pat. Can I ask how we can note it if we've just said we want to have it in writing so we can scrutinise it? Are we noting the fact that we've said that? Yes, we could be that's in the last few minutes, I hope. We move and say it. So we're noting the fact that Peter has given us a verbal report. Yeah, we're also noting the content of the paper. I think we're also noting the cover reports as well, the committee reports as well. Which committee? Well, I asked that and they said no. The cabinet report, they said no. We don't have to know that. I, I think, sorry, Chair, I think because this system is so confused and muddled and we're surrounded by scrutiny committees, because it's quite difficult for us to say that we've um, known anything because we don't we haven't looked at what's in those cabinet papers or anything in any detail. And I think we, we should wait and get this sorted out as to what we're actually supposed to be doing with this paperwork. Now we've said we want all paperwork in writing, then that's fine. All reports in writing except when, when it's impossible to, and then we then that's what we can learn. But I don't mind to noting something I was looking at on the screen. Okay, thanks, Christina. Would it be in order then for us to note the information we have received? Yes. As opposed to noting the report? Yes. Yeah. I think that's what the documentation that we've received means. Mean, I've read it previously, come to the meeting, I'm sure other members have read it as well. And if that's
that's what it asks us in the remembrance and notice me in the verbal report is it conditions in this we would like to have you know for our information but what if, what the papers are asking to note is the contents of the report we've received which is so which is which is the, the written report and so we're not happy to know that yeah. yeah i'm happy to know that okay so everyone's happy to know the written report we must say yes yeah. thank you Take us on to agenda item six then, the Kingdom performance update. And uh, Mark, you're going to give us an update. Or be a verbal update. Yes, I will, I will do, Chair. Yes, thank you. So, uh, so, very importantly then, the, uh, the decision uh, to award the contract to Kingdom that was subject to a uh, call in meeting by this, uh, by this committee uh, a number of weeks ago. Uh, the decision was made to uh, proceed with the new contract that started on the 1st of August. Really importantly, based on the feedback and the interest from the committee and from members, um, we are uh, proposing that in the work plan, we come back when we're six months in chair with the new contract and we've got a clear position. Uh, we're proposing to come back uh, into the January meeting with a detailed drill down into the work of the contract in a similar vein to when officers from Kingdom and the council <coughs> came to this committee uh, last uh, October or November, November, I think it was. So certainly if members are happy, that's the first thing we're looking to do. Um, I've been talking to uh, a gentleman called Michael Fisher, who is the director of Kingdom. Uh, I've had an introductory meeting with him in the last few weeks. I've told them that this committee meeting is taking place and how important it is. And he's proposing, he's got the date in his diary chair, and he's proposing to come along as a, as a company director to, uh, to you know, present himself personally to this committee in January. So I think the good news is that there's a real opportunity you know, in the future to do that. Having said that, based on the interest, um, certainly here today I gave a commitment to just give a, a verbal update so we're really just running through some performance headlines, bearing in mind that the contract has been running six weeks and I've actually got some numbers for August or the first month of running. So really just some of the, uh, the headlines are that during that first month of August, um, Kingdom issued uh, a total of 371 fixed pounds for litter, two for dog fouling, and they've also launched the new smoke-free campaign for smoking in work-related vehicles, etc. And 14 FPNs uh, have been issued for that uh, so far, and that's a, a part of the new contract. In terms of uh, operationally, how we're carrying out the business, um, we have reintroduced uh, plain clothes patrols to target dog fouling at hotspot locations. So these people are still in smart attire. They have the ID, they have the body worn cameras, but they are in that, uh, you know, in that, in that plain clothes uh, way to ensure they're taking uh, effective enforcement action. So looking at doing that, I know a number of members have been interested in actually seeing the contract and the detail of that, and I understand that's now been published on the council's website, and we've got frequently asked uh, questions around enforcement and. Uh, environmental crime. Uh, as an overview, so of the, uh, so there's you know, about 380, 390 FTNs issued in that period. And I know that when we came here, we talked last time about the number of FTNs issued and then the kind of proportion where 